الحمد لله الحمد لله كفى والصلاة والسلام على الحبيب المصطفى صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه كثير والتسليم أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته كيف حالكم جميعا يا أيها الأقوى أقوى brothers and sisters in Islam we extend the Islamic salutations and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our efforts. I was recently asked the question, why do I not um, give classes on a consistent basis as I used to do? Or why the Maha channel is um, not continuously pumping classes? My response is with everything you know that's been going on personally with myself, and different things I'm trying to do as far as balance between deen with dunya, balance between, you know, the deen as well as the dunya. There are certain things that allow me to have the time that I would like to dedicate solely in teaching. There's nothing more refreshing than teaching and giving back that what you have, regardless if, you know, of your status, um, regardless if you don't have lofty degrees or um, any lofty training, if you will. You give back that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you. So I will try my best in the future, inshallah ta'ala, regardless of what's going on, to be consistent um, on the Maha channel here on YouTube to continue to give classes, inshallah. inshallah. <clears throat> Hopefully, inshallah ta'ala, I can continue um, giving those classes. We have did this segment before. We have did this segment before, but by the permission of Allah Jalla wa'ala, we want to revisit this segment. And that is the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that of His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Oftentimes, we don't think why it is so easy for us to fall into what they call as shaqsiya, personality worship, or even shirk. For that matter and as many manifestations because it have to be clear the picture had to be clear and vivid to us what are the rights of Allah what are the rights of his messenger what are the rights that are shared between them both and not to cross those boundaries not to cross those lines once you understand that once that is being etched out to you it's easy to give each and every one its due rights also you won't give the rights of Allah to the rights of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and vice versa. You won't give the rights of the Messenger to the rights of Allah. You will understand this become clearly be Ithnillah. <clears throat> Ibn Uqayyim al Jaziya Rahmatullah Ta'ala they have a famous book which is um known as Al Kafiya Shafiya Fil Intisar al Firakatul Najiya. That's the name of the actual book. It's a poem. However it is known by the ending of each line which ends with the harf noon, the letter noon, okay, in the Arabic language. For those who know the Arabic language, there is a letter which is noon, and it is known as nuniya. All right, it's famous to known as nuniya for short, but the actual name is what I said before al kafiyat al shafiyat al filinti sarul al firqat al najiyah. That's the name that Ibn Qayyim um, named his poem. However, it is known as Nuniya, and it, there is no contradiction in it because each line ends. And it also has over about 6,000 lines of poetry, which means he had committed himself to actually teaching, I mean, actually gathering and putting together a response against many of the um, deviant ideologies, those things which goes against Islam, the Preston belief and tenets of Islam, he was able to put together and contribute. And he have many works just besides this. To this day that we all speak of Ibn Qayyim in reverence. And we already know who his teacher was, one of his teachers anyway, was Shaykh Islam and Taymiyyah. But none of doubt, nonetheless, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to contribute even on a small level of ourselves to Islam. What have we given to Islam? What have we contributed to Islam purely for the sake of Islam? Not purely for anything else, but just to contribute, give back something, inshallah ta'ala. And here we are reading the works of Ibn Qayyim al Jaziyah with the explanation of a scholar who is Muhammad ibn Earth Amin, Muhammad Saleh ibn Earth Amin, rahmatullah ta'ala alayhi, and his beautiful um, 
explanation, which is a brief commentary to help us understand the words of Ibn Qayyim. Ibn Qayyim says in the first two lines of poetry that we're going to cover today, inshallah, he says, Lakinana kunna makala ta sari kin fi kuli wak timbaina kum bi adani. Our rabbu rabbun wa rasulu fa abduhu hakan wa lay salana ila hun thani. And these two lines of poetry he etched out to us our response. When he says, Lakinana kuna, however we say, he's talking about Ahl Sunati wa Jama'ah. Okay, and we start at the highest list of Ahl Sunnah to which we start from the lofty of them, which is the ulama, on down. So he says that, however, we respond with a word which is straightforward, which is clear, opposed to all of the different deviant ideologies and those things which are foreign and go against Islam, we refer to them differently. He says, We say a word which is straightforward. No matter what time and every time, this is going to be a straight word between us. All right, sort of similar to what Allah Jalla mentioned about the Muslims and the believers. What we say a straightforward word to the um, people of the book, um, as Allah mentioned in Surah to Ali Imran. <clears throat> He says, Between you, this is going to be a straight word, and we're going to announce it. And what is that? That the Lord, meaning Allah is a Rabb, okay? And Rabb has this meaning, and those meanings, when it refers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it has normally three to four things that are normally enumerated or incorporated when we think about the word rub applying to Allah. All right, he says, He says, And he says that the Lord was a Rabb, and his mess the, the messenger who was his slave has a right haqqan wa laysa lana ilahun thani and he is and we do not have a second ilah so in other words he clarifying to us that in these two lines of poetry under no circumstances should we ever think that the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam reached the level of allah he can never be Allah Azza wa Jal or never be a second ilah. So therefore we do not do what we do to Allah, those rights for Allah, we do not give and extend to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam under no circumstances. Which clarifies a lot of things that happen um, among the people of the book and what they have done with their messengers and took them as aliha besides Allah Jalla wa Alam. And it's become clear. And for those who don't understand, this is the bedrock of Islam. The creed of Islam is that Tawheed. And Tawheed is singularity, is singling out Allah Jalla wa Alam in all things which are exclusive in the title, entitled to Him. You have to understand that. That become crystal clear. All right? <clears throat> So, Shaykh Ta'min, Rahmatullah Ta'ala Alayhim, he commented on the first line of poetry by saying, Anna la la nubali, meaning that we from Ahlul Sunnah to Jama'at, we are not concerned. Nakulu haqqa wa nusriku bihi baynakum. We are not concerned with the consequences or how you may feel. We're going to make clear between you the truth, the haqqa. Qala Allahu Ta'ala di Nabi, he says, Allah Jalla wa'ala says in his book to his Prophet, uh, to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he says, "Kul Allah a'abudu, mukhlis Allah hudini." Say to them, "O Muhammad, Allah, I worship Him sincerely. Make my worship sincerely for Him. Fa'abudu ma shi'tu min duni al ayat. So worship whatever you will besides Him. You can worship whatever you will, but as far as me, I worship Allah subhanahu wa taala, making my deen sincerely for Allah. Fal mu'min yasriqu bil haq wa la yubal. So the believer." is one who makes the truth clear, distinct, clear, and does not concern himself or herself with any of the consequences or the blame of the blamers. All right? <clears throat> and it use it as a sharp, sharp tool against the people of falsehood. The next line of poetry that Ibn Qayyim says is, Al-Rabbu Rabbun. Okay? wa rasulu Abdun. Okay? wa rasulu Abdun. Ibn uh, Shaykh Taymini says, meaning the Lord is our, is a Lord, and the Rasul is a servant, is a slave. وَلَيْسَ لَنَا إِلَاهٌ ثَانِي بَلِ اللَّهُ وَاحِدٌ Rather, Allah Jalla wa'ala, as Ibn Shaykh Taymini says here, from these lines of poetry, Allah is one, okay? So we know the status. Allah is our Rabb, Muhammad is our Rasul, which is our Abd. 
and the abd and the rub cannot be the same. All right, so there's no two, there is only one ilah. All right, so he says, Well, Laysa Lana ilahun thani. All right, he says, Fali that alam na bud who myth laibad that your Rahmani fit lal mushrik in Nasrani. And the third line of poetry, Ibn Uqayyim, he clarifies to us, he says, For that reason, lam na bud who we do not worship the ha here. This Dhamir pronoun refers back to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. For that reason, we do not worship um, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Similarly, or like um, Mithl al-Ibadat al-Rahmani, um, like we worship al-Rahman, one of the names of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, al-Rahman, the most merciful. Like the action of the Christian mushrik, the Christian polytheist. All right, and you will understand why he specifically mentioned Nasrani, the Christian here. Even though we know that among the Yahud there are mushriks as well, they are mushrik, they are mushriks as well. But he mentioned specifically the Nasrani because what did they do? They deliberately took an Isa alayhi salam as an ilah along with Allah jalla wa ala. So here, Shaykh Taymini says, "I lam na'bud al Rasul," meaning we do not worship the Messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. That becomes clear. And the statement myth that ibadat al Rahmani fit al mushrik al Nasrani, meaning like the worship of al Rahman, done by the actions of the Christian polytheist. For Nasrani you abad al Rasulahu, so the Christian he worshipped his messenger, meaning Isa alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa taala sent Isa to the Nasara. فَآلَ بِهِمُ أَمْرَ حَتَّى غَلَوْ فِيهِ فَجَعَلُهُ إِلَهٌ ثَانِيًا. They went extreme and. Um, their position with Isa to the point that they have made him a second ilah along with Allah. So Ibn Uqayyim says, "Kalla wa lam naglu gulu wa kama naha anhu Rasulu maqafat al kufrani." And he says, "Ha nay, nor do we go extreme as the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prohibited us from uh, going gulu, from going extreme for fear of disbelief, right?" The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Ibn Shaykh Taymin says Haddara min an naglu wa fi la'alla yu'addi thalika ila shirki wa qafra Meaning that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And if those who are familiar with the ahadith Or the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam You will find that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Constantly on numerous bases Always etched out the fact of Staying away from going extreme Stick to the right course Stick to the middle course The straight line Don't go too far to the left Don't go too far to the right And there's a reason for this and the reason for that is because what it does, it leads a person to not only commit shirk, but also to commit disbelief, right? Well, he has the call. For this reason, in the line of poetry, Ibn Qayyim says, مَخَافَةَ الْكُفْرَانِ Out of fear of disbelief. Because if a person go extreme regarding to another individual, right? Sort of what you see a lot of people might do. If a person go extreme regarding another individual such as... <clears throat> Shaksiya, personality worship, then they go extreme to the point that they make that person become like on the level of a ilah, like that of Allah Azza wa Jalla. And this is why it's extremely important not to go extreme in in any matter when dealing with anything, but you know, um, as far as any human being. That's in regards to your love, that's in regards to your hate, that's in regards to your, you know, your justice, anything, your allegiance. Nothing you should do is should always be on a middle course. Someone asked me the other day, they said, well, how do you stay away from going extreme? How do you stay within the, the perimeters or the boundaries? And it's clear, you stay in the perimeters and the boundaries by sticking to the sunnah. By sticking to the kitab was sunnah ala fahm salaf. If you stick to the way that they understood it, how they applied it, and how they actually implemented it, then in that case, you will safeguard yourself from going extreme in those matters. So we don't want to over appraise, um, over exaggerate someone's status, or we don't want to under appreciate someone or undervalue someone's status, and nor do we want to go uh, extreme within our love. That's you know that's even for our children, that's even for our spouses, that's even for ourselves, or even for our friends. We don't want to go extreme in those matters because it's not permissible, let alone um, the dangers that's connected to it. They're going extreme, and and we were talking about this the uh, the other day when the, when the person asked me about that. We was talking specifically about you know going. Gulu in one's love, and how this leads up to shirk, 
And we know that there are many different types of or aspects of love. Um, and Ibn Qayyim talks about it in another book he has, which is Adhim al Hawa, that this praiseworthy of um of desires. And he mentioned about over fifteen types, and it's you know, more than that. But the severe one, the, the, the severe one is I actually stay away from the one which is ishq. And the scholars they explain ish could be like, you know, being overly infatuated with someone, um, totally passionate within your love and you disregard the proper bounds. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Well ta'awa nu ala bibri wa taqwa, wala ta'awa nu ala ithmi or the one, aid and assist one another upon piety and righteousness, and do not aid and assist one another upon what? Um sin and transgression. You know that this also applies to your spouse. Okay, this also applies to your spouse. You have to have a boundary. And this is why we do not say we love our children unconditionally or we love our spouses unconditionally or we love another person unconditionally. That is not permissible in sight of Islam because that's not how it's understood. We love everything besides Allah with conditions. Okay, we do not love anything without Un- without conditions We love everything Besides Allah With conditions Why? Because The Prophet ﷺ Was told by Jibreel ﷺ, If you love someone Love them moderately Love them with a moderate love Because one day You might have to hate The one you love Likewise If you hate someone Hate them moderately With a balance Because one day You might have to love The person you hate So you have to have a condition because if a person goes against that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have established, then it becomes obligatory on you to dislike and to hate that which they do. Like Allah Jalla tells about our parents. If both or one of our parents was to strive to make you commit shirk, Allah says, Fala tuti'uma, then do not obey them in that matter. Do not follow them in that matter. Don't follow their order or their command of committing that shirk. So it's important that we understand we do not love Anything besides Allah unconditionally. All right. <clears> Tell <throat> you. So we see some of the dangers here of going extreme. And that's definitely when it comes to going to the top hierarchy, meaning we're going from Allah into his messenger. Do not go extreme in regards to the Prophet. ﷺ. So Shikr Thameen says that when a person be goes because of a person go extreme for another person, then he takes that person and put him on a level of Allah. Well, you like Ghalib al Mushrik. And you see that. And what happened is this extreme. Is done, yani, by one, or you know, I mean, it goes so far as one being a polytheist. Either nahnu nunazzilu rasul manzalatahu. So Shaykh Tameen says, therefore, we do what? We place the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam on his level, the level that Allah gave him. We place the Messenger on the level that Allah gave him. Okay. And likewise, we do what? We place the haq, the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for him alone. And we do not join anything along with him or anyone besides him along with him in that. All right? For this reason, the Ibn Qayyim goes on, he says, لِلَّهِ حَقٌّ لَا يَكُونُ لِغَيْرِهِ وَلِأَبْدِهِ حَقٌّ هُمَا حَقَّانِ لَا تَجْعَلُوا الْحَقَّيْنِ حَقًّا وَاهِدًا مِنْ غَيْرِ تَمْيِيزٍ وَلَا فُرُقَانِ And interesting enough, anyone that you see opposes the correct creed, notice they all got gulu, <laughs> extremism. They went to one side too further than the other. If you notice, it's not a balanced course. So they went overboard, whether that was regarding their understanding of Allah's names, his attributes, whether that was regarding Allah's yani rububiya, um, or understanding uh, Allah's uluhiya, um, Allah's subhanahu divinity, whether that is going in regards to overboard of their scholars and the people that they follow, or whether it's going overboard in their worship and things that they practice, they went overboard away from that which the Prophet ﷺ came with so this is why it's important you see the scholars Harper on this like Ibn Qayyim is doing in these line of poetry he says Lillahi haqqun. Allah has a right that is exclusive for him that is not to be given or applied to anyone besides him and when he says it, Abd, he meaning the messenger meaning Muhammad ﷺ. and his messenger also has a right which now brings that these are two rights, a right of Allah and a right of his messenger. Right of Allah and the right of his messenger. Okay, you follow me so far? That's what he's saying. He says, Do not 
take these two rights or do not make these two rights into haq and wahid, one right. In other words, don't make the right of Allah or the right of His Messenger one because it's not. All right? Min ghayri tamyiz without distinguishing that right, okay, from each other. Wala furuqani and having a clear distinction of furuqan, which is right in regards to that. Sheikh Uthay Min comment on this. He says, Wa hunaka haqqun thalitu mushtadikun sayyatkuru ma'alif, fa hukuku thalatha khosum, haqqun khosum billah, wa haqqun khosum bil rasu, wa haqqun mushtarik. He says, um, he says, meaning here, and we, we talked about that, meaning that it was only that this right is only deserving for Allah, therefore there will be two rights. And he says there is a third right which is shared between them. And the office should mention that later, meaning Ibn Qayyim and Islam of Poetry, which he will, he would mention that. So he says the rights when it comes to Allah and this messenger are three. Right? There are rights which are exclusive for Allah alone, and then there are rights which are exclusive for the messenger. And then there are rights which they both share between them. Hakum Mushtarik. Okay. Um he says, La Taja Alu Hakani Hakan Wahidan Min Gaidi Tamyiz and Wala Furukani. We'll stop at this pretty much at this line, inshaAllah Ta'ala. He says, Bali Rafulillahi Hakahu wasifuhu bi sifati wa farbiku baina sifati wa sifati rasulihi. He says, meaning that you should know, rather you should know Allah's right. What is Allah's right? Okay. And you should know what he described himself far as from his attributes and his qualities. And you should make a clear distinction between that of the, the attributes of Allah and the attributes of his messenger. All right? A clear distinction. And this is why you, you wouldn't go that, you wouldn't go, you, you see how Islam go to the high points, the far, the far points to make what? To make sure it's safeguard. The Preston Tawheed Because we see what happened with the Christians And what they did with Isa Alright We see what the Yahoos did In regards to the book of Honey Back And what they did to um, Israel So we see how they went extreme in those regards So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it clear This is why the Prophet wa sallam says Call me Abdun Do not call me Rabb Call me Muhammad Or call me Nabi Call me Rasul Or call me Abdun Call me a slave Right and he would go out his way to make sure people do not place him on the manzala of Allah Azza wa Jal. As one individual came to the Prophet wa and said, Ma sha Allah wa, sh- wa ma sha ant. All right? What Allah will and what you will. And the Prophet wa said, SubhanAllah. Huh? Taja'ali nitta? Have you made me a, 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 a ilab with Allah Azza wa Jal? Have you made me a rival with Allah? No. You should say what? He says, say, so someone say, Kul ma sha Allah. Wahda. Thumma. I mean, then kul thumma masha yani rasul. You know what I mean, but don't put me on the same wazin or the same sk- uh, of, of, of ladder of that of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And you might say, well, what did all of this benefit us? This benefits us greatly because we know how to properly apply our love, our tawheed, everything in its proper manner. You understand? So that we don't go extreme. How you safeguard yourself from shirk? He's giving it to you in these lines. And these lines of poetry is telling you how you safeguard yourself from shirk, kufr, and bidah. So when you think of shirk, you should also think of kufr and you should also think of bidah. Right? A lot of people don't understand it. They are actually tied together. Okay? And Sheikh Wazan, uh, he did a beautiful khutbah on all three of them, how they are tied together and, and, and being careful of that with the word bid'ah and, you know, placing tabdir and the word takfir, you know, and, and, and uh, um, a person being a, I mean, in the, in the word fasik. All right, and the word fasik place in tafsuk on someone calling someone a fasik or fasik on stuff like that. How those words um, play and they connect together. So we want to be careful when it comes to these issues because these issues are grave and they're serious. It's not so easy because you have a fallout with someone or a disagreement with someone that you can say, "Yeah, you a kafir." Under no circumstances are you allowed to say that to another, but another believer. All right, someone who manifests to be a believer of the law. Nor should you say jokingly. Or unjokingly, um, a person is a mushrik, right? Um, just like the Prophet ﷺ said, you should not say jokingly about yourself that you are a Jew or a Christian, all right? Unless you be taken serious about you, you should be careful of making these statements. Okay, I'm calling Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we want to be careful along those lines. So we see the importance of um, the ulama and safeguarding his deen and protecting, protecting his deen and that we know the rights of Allah that different from the rights of the messenger and we need to know the rights which is shared between them this is why you do not 
make dua to the, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because that right is only exclusive for Allah. And maybe in the next class, we're going to go into that because he's going to talk about some of the rights, not all of the rights, but some of the rights, which is only exclusive for Allah. And then he will talk about those rights, which is only exclusive to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then he will also talk about the rights, which is shared between them. All right, and that we have a clear picture of it. Whatever said that, whatever we said that was incorrect in our translation, um, was definitely from ourselves and the Shaytan. And whatever we said that was correct is from Allah Jalla wa Ala Subhanahu wa Taala. 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 Subhanahu wa Taala